The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too Hello, everybody, and welcome to My Brother, My Brother, Me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your sweet baby brother, 30 under 30, media luminary, Griffin McElroy. You said you had something funny to say, Griffin. <laughs> it's just, I, the aughts, the, uh, the oxers were last night, and mm-hmm. we all had, I think we can all agree, a really fun time watching them. Mm-hmm. Um, got a little silly there at the end. Uh, now, Warren, Griffin, was that was that silly? Like in the way of when they like drop candy and donuts from the sky, silly or that was very silly. But they did something even sillier at the end that I thought was. Oh, do you mean like when they brought in the tour group and they were like, "You're gonna look at dresses," but it was actually that like, Here's was Denzel super Washington. silly, and it was just sort of Jimmy sort of patented sort of d- prank. Do you mean when they fucking robbed our dear friend Lin Manuel Miranda? of his deserved Oscar. Is that, that what you mean, Griffin? For his writing his the best song of the year. I that do they robbed him. On that note, this is uncalled. And us, by and extension, us, yeah. by the way. Because he would have called that great job horn so many times from that podium. Yeah. It's the closest I would have ever gotten to winning an Oscar, and they took that from me. Um, yes, that is that was uncomfortable, and I know we were all there for... Um, for our friend Len when he was robbed during that scene. Although th- this part's actually not silly. This is actually kind of uncomfortable um, in that I'm afraid that our friendship with Len is over now. And now mm-hmm. La La Land is my best friend. Mm-hmm. Is oh, that right? Re- okay. Does that make sense? That's uncomfortable. Yeah. That like, seems unpleasant. Yeah. It's I, like, I don't want, like we're, we have a TV show now. So like we have to stay, we got to keep swinging to the next sexiest vine. And <laughs> he's been a sexy vine for such a long time and a really good dude, like a super, super good dude. But a uh, friendship with Lynn is over now. La La Land is now my best friend. Going to find out the name of the person who did it. Because I, <laughs> I watched this. I saw the movie. I didn't see the movie, but I, I've seen pictures of it. And I know it's Ryan Gosling and he's in there playing piano. But did he play the did he actually make the songs? It's un- it's it's unclear. It's a confusing movie. We, I always I, get conf- Yeah. Yes. I, I haven't seen La La Land yet, but the scene that they used to be like Ryan Gosling for best actor is a scene of. A person at a jazz club while jazz people are trying to play jazz. Yeah. And here's this person in the audience at full voice talking about what's going on. And yeah. all I can think is that person needs to be removed hey, that's from this not, place. That's not real jazz, man. But like Again, at I- some point, a, a, like a host or a server should have come over and said, uh, excuse me, sir, could you shut the fuck up? Yeah. I mean, Please? that's that's the secret. Like, um you know, a member of the uh, of the Marsalis family or, you know, Cannonball, they don't talk during jazz. That's like the rule one of jazz. Rule two no is just like make jazz. a bunch of stuff up. But like Cannonball will tell you, do not talk during the jazz. That's the second jazz, rule. Baby. No eye contact during jazz. No, God, no. Yeah. And then the third rule is just make a bunch of shit up. And yeah, good luck. Um, no, the silly part is talking about where's where Faye and Warren. <laughs> who are our who are two national sort of treasures um yeah. uh, masters of the stage and screen masters of their craft like they're both masters of their craft you know and they've 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 accomplished some great works between the two of them but they did remind us that they are still older folks it's not their fault. Well, they got their it own the envelope. If I'm sorry, if you get a, if you know you're di- you're dishing out best pick at the end, <laughs> the big show, and you get handed a card that has Emma Stone's name on it, I think you would go, 
I, there's been a mistake before you just pull the fucking trigger and just say another thing. This card says Emma Stone won Best Picture. <laughs> Get up here, Emma. You did it. Can I we? Get, okay. A good movie. I want to dissect. I, I want to dissect that moment for a second because I think a lot, like Warren Beatty got a lot of heat for that moment. I think he's going to continue to get a lot of shade thrown out. Well, first of, first of all, I, I I think that's undeserved because I think Faye is the one that kind of took that saying. ball and ran with it. That's what I'm saying because Warren Beatty opens the envelope. Was like, wait, Emma Stone's not a movie. Warren Beatty <laughs> knows <laughs> Emma Stone is not a movie. movie. And Faye Dunaway goes, oh, you're terrible. <laughs> just says, and all I can think is inside Warren Beatty's head, he must have just been screaming, <laughs> Faye. No, Faye, Faye I, at that point no, made I, Faye at that point made a fucking risk reward sort of evaluation and decided I don't want to be up on this stage anymore in this uncomfy moment. So I'm just going to pull the trigger on this fucking thing without even like locking down whether or not I'm saying the name of the real best pick. Huh, it's weird that Emma Stone's name is so big on this card, but whatever. I'll read the movie name smaller. I she really yes feel, and the whole thing. Huh? Yes. I feel like what we're seeing is old Hollywood mm. still having its instincts in place for heat seeking. My my man Warren and my lady Faye are nothing if not heat seekers. They saw that and they thought, Ooh. my man Warren looked at that card and the, you know what crosses his mind? Time to go trending. Time to trend, yeah. Warren. Well, oh, Justin, Time I'm to sorry. get back this, in the I fucking think the limelight. Thing was, have I had sex with Emma Stone? Have I'm I? Warren Beatty. <laughs> I'm Warren Beatty. But also, now, time to trend. Is Time it, to get on this comet. Is it? Trend with me, Faye. Hey, Faye, take my hand. <laughs> Take my hand and follow me. We're t- it's time to trend. I have no idea what that means, but I want to do it. I do want to do it. I hear a lot of people trending, and it's time to trend, Faye. Come with me. It, C- c- let- catch this comet in a net with me, Ch- Faye, and fly to trending. Is it possible that this um this really silly thing that happened here at the end this silly it's a zag i mean let's yeah, call it's a good it fucking is. zag it's a, it's, it's a fucking zag, it's a zag and a half. it's a silly switch up do you think that this was done somehow as sort of a magic trick prank by now you see me too as a sort of Viral. like slight for yes. being for being slighted by the oscar noms hmm. anything's possible i really wish la la land could have won it cuz that's my best friend now and I would have, uh, I would have loved it to have that feather in its cap. But super um, congr- congratulations to Moonlight. I should yeah. say, uh, I would, lo- I would love, love, love to talk about all the movies and if they deserved mm-hmm. it and who won what. I saw. Let me see. Point zero one percent of the movies nominated, and that's mm. just like the ten minutes I was awake. During uh uh during Doctor Strange, not because Doctor Strange was a boring movie. I had just had a baby, so yeah. I was just very asleep. Took boy. it to the sleep sleep bird. Um, the thing about being think- a parent of a young child when you're watching the Oscars for me this year, most of the awards I was about engaged with and as like v- versed in as if I was watching awards for lawn furniture design. Mm-hmm. Like it might as well have been that. Until the animated segment, at which point I was like on my feet, (laughs) losing it, like uh, just like listing off the merits and demerits of all the nominated uh, pictures. How do you, uh, let's get into this. How do you feel about Zootopia taking the big one? Zootopia has a great message. Yes. And it's uh, that animals deserve to be people. Something like that. Well, (laughs) it's not, it's not really that so much. Uh, Zootopia is a fine film with a great message. Um, does it make me cry every time I watch it yeah. when she's like, I am Moana and I'm like, me too. Yeah. And I'm on my feet crying and screaming at the screen. Yeah. No, absolutely not. But it's a movie about discrimination, which seems like a good message a good for message. right now. Yeah. How to do it <laughs> in a good way. A that's good, very secret yeah. and no one will know about. But is that, uh, wait, hold on. It I have obviously seen Zootopia, Justin. Is Zootopia about how to get away with racism? <laughs> No, no, it's about okay. No, but it. I tell you what, it's not about inspiring a generation. Well, it probably is um, also about. It is kind of like also that. I get you. I mean, I get you, but like, I, yeah. They're so. It's a. It's a great. It's. They're both fine pictures. Moana is obviously better, but it's like it's fine. I try to watch Kubo, 
but it had it was very it was a little bit dark and my daughter lost interest in 10 minutes so i'll give that one a bit a razzie that one gets a razzie from just because it it was was just again just because the colors were a little muted well colors were dark and there wasn't a big musical number within the first 10 minutes yeah can i say just before we move on for the oscars i would like to give my own award um and this is 100 percent all sincerity Best jacket at the Oscars. Oh goes boy, to Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Oh, was oh, it that jacket? Oh, it was an amazing like blue velvet number. Ah, uh, I just, I fell in love with it right now, away. And now we got to do our worst dressed segment. Can you even believe they left the house in it? And I'll start things out. Josh Gad was just he was wearing he's wearing just a suit, but his wiener was hanging out the whole time. But really, the problem was the shoulder pads. The shoulder pads were a, a bit wild. Yes, the wiener was fine. The wiener I was liked, the wiener was excellent. I liked when Deadpool jumped up, ran up on the stage. Oh yeah, and he was like, "I'm gonna let you finish." Yeah, but actually, Deadpool was the best. That was like very good viral. It, it, and his mm-hmm. butt was out, and he was like, "Yeah, fart you very much." He said, "Fart he you very much," it. and it was like kind of inappropriate. Because it was like yeah. La La Land won, and then they got up and they're like, "No, we didn't." Moonlight won, and then Moonlight got up to accept his reward, and then he ran up and he was like, uh, "Deadpool won." I'm sorry, I didn't know that the other thing was going to happen, and now this is all getting a little um, <laughs> um, overcomplicated. Can we go back? Can we? Can we edit this? No, Mr. Reynolds. Um, um, anyway, if anybody has La La Land's phone number and or wants to like tell them about our show, so I can get that sort of fire going. Can we not joke about this, please? Because Lim will take it very personally. And so, not personally, but seriously. And he'll take the joke too far, and he'll stop talking to us. And he'll make us talk to La La Land. And that's a movie, not Lynn, a person. I don't, I don't stand with Griffin on this, Lynn. Anyway, that's our skewed take on the Oscars. It's our skewed views. <laughs> Why don't that's we do more movie views. stuff? Like, we've got a yeah. lot to say. Like, Suicide Squad won out. What? It did? That, so that's like one... That's like what could be one whole segment. And it's like Hacksaw Ridge, really? That could be another, a whole different segment. Uh, um, neither one of those movies have I seen. No, God, no. They don't give it to the movies that I like. Oh. Which is like the movies that I saw in the theater. Because I'm looking down the list. I saw, I did see Deadpool in the theater. That got a nom? That no noms for dead for Deadpool on this one. Maybe they'll nominate it next year. Like, you know how they always do like stuff we missed, yeah, yeah, or, like yeah. miss misconnections. <laughs> mm-hmm. I should see movies that don't have superheroes in them. I think if I want to get the most out of the Oscars, the Doctor I think Strange, I need to stop. The Doctor Strange got a nom. It got the nom for the the best uh, effect things. Hey, um, also while we're talking about best effects, <laughs> Oscars, if if I could if I could uh, bend your ear for a second. I think I'm with you in that it's very funny that no one understands the technical awards. Like, that's hysterical. I'm with you. Maybe that doesn't have to be the joke every, every each single time. year and multiple times per sh- like, th- like, at some point, don't you just expect those special effects wizards to stand up and say, we get it! We get it. Or, alternatively, they say, fuck you, we're taking a year off. And then Jurassic World 2 comes out, and all the dinosaurs are just like fucking dudes in those stupid inflatable costumes and that's it and then the next year it's like okay guys we're sorry this year the technical oscars are the only oscars we're gonna do the the best actress was handed out in a non-televised segment of the show but anyway here's a new way of fucking a new stylist that you can use to draw shit it's amazing. I just think it's horse apples that the people who actually make the movies mm. get cloistered off to their sub oscars and w- but but best animated short like really? Those Unless it's before Pixar movie, nobody though. saw it. They were nobody amazing. Saw it. Though. Here's the here's my problem with it. Year uh, over yeah, year. we really are doing this fucking yeah, thing year over year. They're like it tagged a lot. We don't even know what's going on. And guaranteed, there's people that work in the technical field who are like, oh, okay, well, we'd be happy to explain it to you. Nope, <laughs> no, <laughs> you'd ruin the joke. It's like yeah, we don't, we don't, we, we just don't get it. Did you see fucking Finding Dory? We made all of it. All of it was me. It was me. My name's Clark, and I made Finding Dory with my computer. If they had spent half the time they spent joking about not understanding them to actually explaining them, we would all have, like, minors in th- th- special effect 
design oh, work engineering. That, that would be amazing. Next year, Andrew Garfield gets up to present the technical Oscars, and he gets up and he goes, I'm supposed to talk about how I don't understand that. That's the shit they've written for me. here. And he just throws away the script, and he like sits down at a table and has a three-hour-long conversation about the new like <laughs> refraction lenses. That he, pulls a, he pulls a fucking Justin, a Justin Trudeau up there. He's like, well, I'll break this shit down. How long you got? the history of the camera <laughs> and it's all here's the best here's the best part is it's all wrong and lies <laughs> but it is three hours long <laughs> here's how i bet it works <laughs> and now i've uh, never used a camera but if i had to guess uh okay time to get into the advice here's our first question Yesterday, I went to a used video store and I tried to buy a copy of the Denzel Washington movie, Unstoppable. Denzel was wrong yeah. again. Yeah. It's the greatest actor of our time. I took the case to the register, but the girl couldn't find the disc in the filing cabinet. She took my name and phone number and said she'd call when and if they found it. Here's the problem. I don't actually want Unstoppable that badly. If I never go back to pick it up, am I good? Um, And that's Dang. that's from... Somewhat unstoppable, or somewhat stoppable. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of issues. This is the wild train movie, right? Where Denzel has to fight a big train with the help of um, Captain Kirk. I think so. Yes. A lot of um, a lot of uh, Hollywood glitz in this episode. I think. Yeah, yeah a lot of a lot of that. No stars in the sky tonight. They are all in this episode. I think. Um, uh, I used to work at a GameStop and. If the, if I ever if you came in and you tried to buy SSX Tricky and I was like oh, I can't find the disc I'll take your name down and if I find the disc I'll I'll let you know um, that's just sort of a salve for you to try to get you to leave the store because I ain't gonna find that disc if it's not right in the SSX section of the mm-hmm. of my folio then I'm not going I'm not I am not going to locate the disc in three months when fucking Halo Eight comes out and I am stocking up Halo Eight. A fucking SSX tricky disc is not going to fall from a hidden crevice in the cabinet. It, that disc is gone, and the game is gone forever. Unstoppable is gone. It got dragged to hell, and I'm very sorry. Somebody threw it in the fucking garbage can or stole it. That is how it does. Griffin, mm-hmm. let me paint a counter picture for you. One in which miracles can happen, and angels do exist. I will. I, I will. Let me take down your number. I'll call you as, as soon as uh, we find a copy of it. Uh, they find it. They call him like, oh, okay, yeah, great. And then the next day, somebody else comes in and is like, hey, is that unstoppable? I thought, no, this is for Dave. This is for Dave. This is Dave's copy. And then Dave doesn't come in. And then the next day, somebody else is like, ooh, unstoppable. I've been meaning to check that out. Could I please buy that VHS copy? No, this is Dave's copy. But after a while, the store clerk begins to lose faith in Dave. And then by extension, humanity. Sadness reigns. Is um, that it? The Finn. Oh, Jesus, Trav. I thought Whoa. there was going to be a turn. No, that's the thing, Griffin. There is no turn because Dave did not go get Unstoppable. I uh, I have a fun story along these lines. A friend in college. Uh, uh, Used to work at Blockbuster and stole a copy of Showgirls. Yeah. No, was, tell me all about I this, ne- friend. I didn't steal a copy of Showgirls. I stole a copy of Fight Club. It's in our fucking TV show. CSO.com. Free week. Oh, I forgot you go, you're only allowed to steal one thing when you work at Blockbuster no, and you have Tommy immunity. I had come over and videotape Showgirls off HBO while we were on vacation. Anyway, a friend of mine was working in a, a video store in LA and uh, Lance Henderson came in and um, uh, he's, he yep. asked for a millennium and the guy working the desk... Uh, said, do you want the 1989 uh, movie or do you want the, the TV show? And Lance Henderson said, I want the one with me in it. Because <laughs> Lance Henderson is the star of the TV series. <laughs> so I don't know what this world is that Lance has to go rid his own copy of Millennium, the series, on a video cassette, presumably. Uh, but that that's a, I, I always get a kick out of that story. Um, do y'all want to get who? Yeah, please. So I'm sending by uh so send him by Riding High, Zoe Kinski. Thank you, Zoe. It's Yahoo Answers user. Sorry, something's gone wrong. I'm gonna try one refresh. I'm gonna give this a little bit of bandwidth and see if we can't no. This dog won't bark. It's from Joey who asks I am naming all of my pants. Let's start with the torn Wranglers with spaghetti sauce on the left leg. Any ideas? I'm very fond of them. It's just like a fun way of like categorize, like you need to know 
you need to know, like, you you open up the drawer, and it's like, what jeans do I want to wear today? And it's like, at this point, I have, like, eight or nine pairs of jeans, you know? I'm on I'm on TV. And so I need, like, a, a way of, like, a shorthand way of, like, knowing who they are. One more time. Torn Wranglers, spaghetti uh-huh. sauce on the left leg. If you'd like, I can start you off with um, some responses from Yahoo. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, Katz says Italian Stallions. That's fun, but I think we can do better. And just like that, here comes Dolores and the Prune, who says, Rip Messwell, Tom Longstrand, Uh (laughs) Basil Pestowski. Huh? Uh, Sally says, how about naming them after the Swiss national hero, William Tell? The missing drawstring has been used for this crossbow. The hole where he was aiming for the apple in your pocket but lost his concentration. He got a whiff of cheese mixed with something he didn't quite recognize as emanating from his homeland. Fuck right off. What? Why are we wasting the best minds of our generation, the most creative talents of our generation on Yahoo Answers? Uh, Enzyme 303 says, Ranguini. It has that spaghetti western feel to it. Perfect name for the good, bad, and the ugly. That's actually pretty good. There's four fucking pages of answers to naming so this, this person's trying to genes. name their pants that yeah. has spaghetti on them? Mm-hmm. Why? Why? Play along, Brother. yes, and. But what's the. But <laughs> Play for, with I, me. Griffin, yeah. But I need to know for what? For the National Pants Registry? Like, where does this come up? Is this Play just. Play like, with what, uh, me. But, Griffin, I need to know. <laughs> I need to know the parameters of when you might say this name out loud to fully understand. Because, like, mess pants. Why not just mess pants? These are, these are mess, mess pants. Mess pants is good, but you can do better. Just play with me. I'm trying to, Griffin. I just need to understand who... Okay, Griffin, answer me this one one simple question. Yeah. Who might I say the name of these pants No one. To, to. to you. It's like a fun game for yourself. Then why not just, like, Doug? <laughs> these pants are Doug. If that's funny I'm to you, I guess. I'm gonna put on Doug. If that's funny to you, I put my for... legs inside Doug. See, now it's getting better. Doug's a little worse for wear. Doug got some sauce on Doug. Got some. Du- now your name is Rip Messwell. <laughs> Tom <laughs> Longstrand. <laughs> I'll be honest. I'll part the curtain a little bit here. I did include this question just because I wanted to put put up these amazing names from Dolores and the Prune, Rip Messwell, Tom Longstrand, and Basil Pestowski. <laughs> Basil Pestowski the, is my favorite. It's very good. And I thought maybe we could get in there and play along. But apparently you boys don't want to play my new game that I came up with for I you. I just, I, Griffin, I don't. No, nah, it's fine. I just don't know. I just uh, don't know. It's fine. Um, how about well, a different one? We'll get you guys back in your comfort zone. Okay. This one was sent in by a lot of folks. Uh, well, two folks, uh, Nicholas Potter and Christian Ang both sent this in. Thank you. It's from Yahoo Answers user Justin. Uh-oh. Uh, Uh-oh. Not me. Justin uh, started his account on Christmas Day and put this one up on Christmas Day. Thank you, Justin. Justin asks, do dogs know they are dogs? Oh, shit. Yeah. So I think now you'll play. Now you'll play with me. Because I think dogs if... No, they are dogs. You think about this and you think, who gives a shit? But then you also think about Marmaduke, the dog who thinks he's a person. Mm-hmm. So if that if he exists, he exi- exists? Okay, let's establish this baseline just for those people screaming at your podcast player, your Victrola or whatever. I I think that dogs very clearly can see themselves and other dogs and humans and be like, we're definitely, yeah. there's something different here. The question for me, at least, is do they register like, well, those people own us. We yes. we are their pets. We, the, they well, I don't know if they, if they go, I don't know if they go that far, but I do think they re- regard us as like the tall striders and the food god, um, you know. <laughs> Who who rains who rains their benevolence down upon us? I feel like dogs know other dogs are dogs. Yeah, but they kind of feel bad for those guys. Oh, like, I see. Look at the look at all those guys that are owned by people, and man, that must be a rough putt for them. I feel bad for dogs. I don't feel like dog dogs probably see themselves as small humans on four legs and then they see other dogs as dogs like there's an air of superiority i feel feel like really all dogs all dogs are kind of up their own butts a little bit 
A little bit. Well, that would make this a lot of sense. They thing. are always trying to get up their own butts. Yeah, that, makes that sense. would explain it. You'd think that they... Hmm. I, this is a tough one. Do you think they'd be bummed out, or is this just the world that they know? What do you think they think of cats? Yeah, I mean, now we're really getting into it. Like... When I think the we can all we can a cat that lives in the house with them is the cat like yeah me and the other humans just putting up with this thing. I think <laughs> I think we can all agree that they do look at us as giant gods as as giant like giant powerful figures. You know what I right. mean? Like they worship they worship us unto a god. The tall striders. I actually think Griffin, you have you have really touched a nerve for me because this is my problem with raccoons. Is I spend so much time with dogs. Finally, we're getting to the heart. Yeah, I know. Of it. Let's really get down to it. I spend so much time with dogs who like very clearly recognize that I am a superior being, and then there's like a raccoon in my garbage, and I'm like, Whoa! and it looks at me like fuck you, and just keeps doing what it's doing. I'm like, no, this is not. How okay, this so is raccoons to know, go? raccoons know they're raccoons, right? And they but fucking raccoons don't recognize my divinity, is what I'm saying. Right, exactly. So yes, that's a good point. I think horses are. I think equally. I think horses are just ambivalent, right? Like horses know they're horses, and I think they're one of the few animals that are like, yeah, I'm a fucking horse. Check. Guess what? That I just told you. So, and I think that they're totally fine with it. And I think I don't even think they would refer. I don't think they would think of us as gods at all. I think because they're taller than us, and they have like way more legs, like twice sure. as many. So, shoot. I think when we ride a horse, I think the horse is like, what a cool favor I'm doing. For what this. about when a dog sees you on a horse? Now, that's probably like, <laughs> I don't know why all dogs don't just instinctively shit when they see that. Like, <laughs> they, what do we even do now? The one thing I had on them was I had four legs, and now they have six. This would be a, this would be essentially like seeing um, like God giving a like a bigger god a piggyback ride somehow like i don't i don't even understand how that visual would pan out i bet the harder thing for dogs is when they see people get off a horse mm. like no what are you doing what? yeah what are you, you just figure no what are you, are you crazy get back on there what are you doing why would you ever get off do you think that when animals maybe we human beings have made such a big deal out of animal pairings and like weird animal pairings but i guarantee that like most animals are just like Yep, you, me, yep. Like, horse is just a bigger dog. Dogs are just smaller horses. Travis, are you sure you haven't seen Zootopia? <laughs> you got the message. You got it, dude. Like, you've got, it's a great, you should watch it, because you've already got its good message in your heart. So, And I guess I don't need it. <laughs> that's, that's how I look at movies. Do I already know that that thing is bad? I don't need that movie. I've got it. Um, I already know to guard the galaxy. Thank you very much. I uh, have a new segment oh. on the show. Is it just another question or is it like a new? No, it's a new segment I invented. It's called uh, Guy Another Day. And it's a Guy Fury update, just like mm -hmm. checking in on Guy. Guy Fury, um, see what he's into. All right. Um, Wait, like minute my... by minute? Like right now? What is he no, doing? No, just like when he does something notable. <laughs> okay. My wife sent me a quote from a real interview that Guy Fieri did with a, a vice property called Munchies. And they asked him where Flavortown was. Have you guys seen this? No, no but I would really okay, like to make good. guesses as to his answer. Just fucking hold on for literally probably the quote of your life. Oh, my I, God. This, I want this to be my eulogy. Okay, here we go. On camera, I once said, this pizza looks like a manhole cover in Flavortown. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know that's not the funny part of the quote, but I hadn't heard that one before. Willy Wonka had a chocolate stream, you know? So it's taking these iconic food items, these iconic food moments, and giving them a home. They all live in Flavortown. <laughs> it's like one of those things in the Matrix. You can only get down with Flavortown if you believe in Flavortown. <laughs> I have people walk up to me and say, hey, I'm a citizen of Flavortown. I have people that want to pledge to be a city council member of Flavortown <laughs> or the mechanic. It their, doesn't stop. Their names are Justin Travis and Griffin McElroy. They email me every week. What would be the airline of Flavortown? Wait, Sausage he said airlines? that? Wait, I'm reading the fucking quote. He what would be in his own statement about <laughs> Flavortown. He began to, began to pose his own questions to flesh out the universe. 
What would be the airline? In Flavor Town. What would be the titles of the Star Wars movies in Flavor Town? (laughs) Sausage Airlines? It just doesn't stop. I just said it. And then people heard it. Goes all the way to the top. (laughs) Here's the fucking cherry on this bad boy. Of course, there's no Flavor Town. Unless you believe in it. Oh my god, you scared me so bad. Because of course I do. Like, you scared me fucking really, really bad for a second there, guy. What do you think, as long as we're going down this hypothetical road, Mr. Fietti, what do you think mayoral elections are like in Flavortown? Do you think it's based mm. on who's most flavorful, who can bring, like, protect the most flavor, who can bring the most flavor from outside? So is it like I've traveled afar and I've brought you new flavors to Flavortown? Or is, like, Pizza the Hut the mayor of Flavortown? I think... I think we get, I think there's an electoral college system just on a very local, hyper local level. Mm-hmm. And then what, I think that results in two candidates and then they have a buffalo wing eating contest. <laughs> Do you think is, what role does Mr. Fieri play in doesn't. the politics and the running of Flavortown? Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't. Are you fucking kidding me? Guy Fieri wandered into Flavortown as one might wander into Narnia and discovered its dark secret. He was transformed by mm-hmm. um by a by a satyr um and interesting and then he returned to us through through his uh magic pizza oven that he climbed mm-hmm. out of and uh he somebody was like what the fuck happened to your hair and face and body and he was like i don't know it got wild over there these and sunglasses then, are fused to the back of my head yeah and then they're hot th- those are covering the eyes that he uses to watch his back constantly in case flavor town comes for him because they do send they're called reclaimers and what they do is they escape fla- – they are given permission to walk in our world. Mm. And if you speak of Flavor Town, then they're, they're hunting you. They're basically hunting people who uh, can, can let their secret be known. But then, Justin, uh, why does Mr. Fieri uh, – like, wh- why does he draw their wrath? He could just stay quiet about Flavor Town. Oh, because he stole uh, their fucking secrets. Because and also he's very good with his spark lance. That's one of the weapons that he took from Flavor Town <laughs> mm-hmm. from the armory. And <laughs> when the reclaimers come for Guy Fieri, mm-hmm. uh, he uses the spark lance to that he stole from Flavor Town to defend himself. Mm, and that's why it's he a must, special. That's why he must always be on the move, mo- moving from diner to drive and to dive, right. never he's stopping, all, never that's sleeping. Right. That's why they play the sad, incredible Hulk music at the end of every oh, episode. Yeah, of drives and dives because he's on the way. He's got to keep on the move because they're always looking for it. This does make sense because I I actually went to a restaurant not two days ago that had one of those like guys been here panels, mm-hmm. and and I always thought that was like because we're on the show, and now I'm thinking maybe it's like a memorial plaque because like he finished filming and his then duty bought off. Like four reclaimers saved all of our lives. Yeah, yeah. If they see, if you ever see one of those plaques, keep, just to stay near it for a while, and eventually you'll see someone come in that looks like a predator made out of fettuccine alfredo. Yeah, and that's a reclaimer. That's so what you're a reclaimer. Gonna a stay out of there. It's just sorry, a fetider. No, it's feta- no, 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 no. Mm, maybe yeah. it's made of feta. Mm. Would that be better? It's not really. It's so it's just guy and his hot rod and his spark lance just driving from place to place, just trying to find the secret that's going to get the the flavor town um, uh, reclaimers off of his back. And really, um, the last Final Fantasy game was loosely based off of Guy Fieri's story. Um, it was, it's kind of like a cool crossover. Here's what the history books don't tell you. There was actually a time at which. Flavortown and our world were one. Interesting. And they actually oh. were torn apart, though there is a small like Venn diagram overlap in the it pizza called- oven that Mr. Fieri uses to travel betwixt the two planes. Now, Mr. Fieri is trying to draw them they, back they, into overlap. That world was called the personal Pangea, right? Correct. And okay. so Mr. Fieri <laughs> is trying to pull the two worlds back into alignment. But now the government of Flavortown realizes that if that happens, they will lose all the control over their delicious citizens that they yeah. come to rely on and, and, and really bask in. So now, they're trying to stop the convergence, the flavor convergence. The flavor singularity, because it's going to, ha- it, if, if he's unsuccessful, it's going to happen, and we're going to get like a shot of like an eight-year-old in Iowa or something, and she bites into a, 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 a crisp... A honey crisp apple and just fucking pizza sp- sauce spills out of it. And she's like, mm-hmm. Mama, something's wrong. 
And then you look up into the sky and it's just noodles, zesty noodles falling out. Well, that's the thing is like right now, everything you taste is maybe one percent of what the actual you die. You would die. You would die. If you got if you got a fucking un unfiltered flavor town, you would be destroyed. This is like the giver, right? Only only Mr. Fietti remembers flavor. And he has to tell us about it because flavor has been removed from our lives. But if this convergence happens, the flood of flavor would knock your tongue out the back of your head. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not speaking metaphorically here. Yeah, it would knock your tongue. The The secret is, and the thing that they're really trying to keep him from, is there is a tower that connects our world mm-hmm. to Flavor Town. Yeah. And in order to get to, you have to follow... They call them cream beams. Mm -hmm. They're beams made of different cream sauces. Yeah. And you can follow them to the tower that unites. uh, And the man who controls it all is the sorcerer. And the The sorcerer. The sorcerer is. He defends the cream beams, but he also like tries to keep interlopers out, you know? So he has to sneak past the sorcerer to get into Flavor Town every time. It's. It's truly a miraculous tale when you really sit down and think if, about it. If I can just stop for a second, because we always forget to do this. Fucking TM, 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 TM. TM, 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 TM. Well, yeah, no, yeah, hold on. TM, sorry. TM. We can't TM Guy Fieri. I'm sorry, no, fellas. Yeah. No, we well, can't story, do that. Okay, but it's fair use. TM, Big Giant Head LLC, TM, us, don't steal this one. This one's got this one's got cinematic potential. This one this one's a movie. This, can one, we this, make, this one's can, our moneymaker. This we is make, the one we can finally retire on. Can we make a movie... About the sorcerer who controls the all pillar that connects our world to Flavor Town, and uh, our our quartet across the cream beams, um, without including Mister Fieri at all, because I don't I don't actually know that that would be a good hang. I feel like the story's bigger than him at this point. Yeah, yes. you know, I feel like you know, I w- if he won't get on board, somebody will. We'll name Give our main Emerald character on the line. Gee Fiery. Oh, that's good. Uh, uh, listen, if we're going to fund this film, we're going to need some outside investment. And to, just as a, to get that kick started, uh, let's head on over to the money zone. Do you want to shave your goatee? Sure. We all do. Hi, I'm Travis McRoy, speaking specifically to Guy Fieri now. <laughs> This week, we're sponsored by Harry's. Mr. Fieri, I really think this may be the product for you. That pesky facial hair, you've tried everything. You've tried clippers. You've tried hedge trimmers. You've tried, like, sheep you've, to eat you've used the, your You've face. used the sparkling. It's like, be honest. And nothing has worked. Well, might I recommend Harry's razors? Uh, it, when you, oh, it, It's got five German engineer blades, a lubricating strip, Flex hinge for a comfortable glide, trimmer blade for hard to reach places like your the back of your head where your glasses are fused to, and weighted ergonomic handle. Um, uh, Harry's started with just two guys, Jeff and Andy. Then they bought a factory with a hundred years of blade making experience, so they could make their own high quality razors, sell them online, and ship them directly for half the price. You don't have to go to stores and wait for someone to unlock a cage and pay you know fifty dollars for two blades. Instead. Just check it out. All that stuff I mentioned, the five engineer blades, the lubricant, all that, that's $2 a blade. That's such an amazing deal. And Harry's is so confident in the quality of their blades. They want you to try their most popular trial set for free. Comes with a razor handle of your choice, five blade cartridge, and shaving gel. Free when you sign up. Just pay a small fee for shipping. Um, If you want to redeem that trial offer, go to harrys.com, H-A-R-R-Y-S, dot com slash my brother right now that's harrys.com slash my brother uh can i talk about blue apron because it's really i like it a lot yes Look, i'm just gonna do it i don't need to bother asking for permission folks when you eat blue apron you will think you have stolen the secrets of flavor town for yourself which is ridiculous because you would almost certainly be destroyed by the by the you know the woodland satyrs and um, the fairy circles, you would be trapped in their endless dance. Uh, but you, they are going to send you the most flavorful food uh, without having to risk this deadly journey, this deadly uh, voyage, um, for less than 10 bucks per person per meal. And what they send is seasonal recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients uh, that you can use to make delicious home-cooked meals. Stuff like salmon piccata with orzo and broccoli, pork chops and miso butter with bok choy and marinated apple, vegetable chili and baked sweet potatoes with crispy tortilla strips. Sometimes these, like, Featured upcoming meals, uh, really 
uh, almost every time they are stuff that we haven't gotten yet. And so this is like actually an exciting sneak preview for me, a diehard Blue Apron subscriber. Like, ooh, pork chops and miso butter. Don't mind if I do. Um, it's really great. I've had it going for like almost, I feel like almost a year now, and I didn't know how to cook very good uh, beforehand, and now I'm getting pretty good, and I'm, I'm, I love, I love cooking, and it was like a thing that I never thought I would sort of get good at. Um, so it's it's really great, and you can check out this week's menu and get your first three meals for free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash mybrother, all one word. Uh, you're going to love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron, so don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash mybrother. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. I got a message for Valley, and it's from David. It says, hey, Valley, hello. I'm talking to you right now, Valley. I am, in fact, speaking to you from inside the mouth of a McElroy brother. Um, it's a disturbing image. I have to say, it feels pretty good in here. Happy birthday, Valley. I hope you have a good day and that your tentacles can continue to creep into all sorts of places over the next year. You are absolutely amazing. Well, this goes on it goes to some places. That went, yeah, that took my mouth some places. I don't like the idea that I'm an automaton controlled by in like a Meet Dave scenario, but that is fine. Happy, um, happy birthday, birthday, Valley. It's a birthday one that one was by me by the way no one could no one made me do that um i have a message for daniel and it's from your older sister julia who says happiest birthday to my fourth favorite brother thanks for infecting me with mabim bam mania you're one of the smartest and funniest people i know and you have excellent taste in podcasts motorcycles tattoos and mm, music I don't know why that has a it's bunch of that way. Yeah. Uh, only a few more years until we're in a nursing home together, day drinking and wearing diapers. Whew, that's the dream. I love you very much. You know, Griffin, ha- you you on a very recent episode of Rose Buddies talked about how like the different uh, the different jumbotrons for each show had their own kind of like <clears throat> themes, you know, yeah. and like with Rose Buddies, it's like all about love and Adventure Zone. It's all about like all D and D groups. groups. Yeah, and my brother, my brother, and me. We have a recurring like gentle insult thing that yeah. happened. Like you're my fourth favorite brother, and you have tentacles. Like, it's, this- a, it's good natured ribbing, but it's also like psychosexual control over us and like the glee that people feel. Like I'm making a McElroy say stuff. Mm, it feels good in this soft mouth. It's very upsetting. It's, um, I mean, yeah. Thank you for your support. Thank if you, you would for like your support. To control our mouths. <laughs> You can go to maximumfun.org forward slash jumbotron, but and then cry because there's nothing. (laughs) Yeah, for not this year. You can weep and gnash your teeth. The Dead Pilot Society podcast brings you hilarious comedy pilots that were never made, featuring actors like Aubrey Plaza, Andy Richter, Paul F. Tompkins, John Hodgman, Adam Scott, Molly Shannon, Busy Phillips, Tom Lennon, Anna Camp, Lori Metcalf, Felicia Day, Michael Ian Black, Adam Savage, Paul Shear, Ben Schwartz, Skylar Aston, Mae Whitman, Josh Molina, Ben Feldman, Nicole Byer, Jason Ritter, Sarah Chalk, Steve Agee, Jane Levy, Allison Tolman, Danielle Nicolette, Casey. Wilson, Anna Ortiz, Lorraine Newman, June Diane Raphael, Kieran Chipka, Ed Week, Zach Knight, and Carrie Kenny Silver, John Ross Bowie, Jamie Denbo, Janet Varney, Alexander Torsen, Summer, Ellen Rollins, Matt Gordon, Keller, and many more. Listen at MaximumFun.org, iTunes, or wherever you download podcasts. Uh, we've only done one question, so I'm going to do yeah. another question. Well, what about a Yahoo? But we've only done one question, and you did two Yahoos. That's a good point. <clears throat> I started dating my longtime friend recently. I noticed a horseback riding trophy on his dresser and asked him about it. He said that as a youth, he did trick riding and could even do handstands while the horse was in motion. When asked to do a handstand, he refused, saying it's easier to do on a horse. Brothers, is my new boyfriend a liar? How can I get him to back up his claims of sick tricks? That's from Riding High or Hiding Lies in Kings Country <laughs> County, Kings County. Ah, uh, damn it. It's, damn. I got so excited because you said you're dating your longtime friend. And I'm, in my mind, I was just like, oh, what a love. But then this is a this is a pretty big lie. Like, this is a pretty major lie. And it shows it tells you that this person is willing to lie about in if they'll lie about this, they'll lie mm-hmm. about literally anything but, for fun. But they do have a trophy. Shh, 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 shh. Okay. I will not deny the fact that it is possible to handstand while riding on a horse. I think it's going to require a pretty fucking good jockey and a pretty fucking good horse. 
a broad <laughs> a broad horse that has a, 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 a literal flat back a real flat backed literal pommel horse is what we're talking about here um is it easier to do that on the ground that doesn't have shifting meat and bones inside of it no 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 of course not no Griffin, it's counterpoint 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 mm, this is gonna have to be a fucking pretty good counterpoint perhaps this boyfriend mm. from birth was only trained to handstand on a horse. They have never done it on a flat surface before. Oh, and it's, is, so no. it's like they've only like maybe they're maybe he's from a family of fucking trick riders because otherwise, how do you accidentally get into it? How if your family is not horse people, do you at like six be like, Mom, Dad, parents, folks, I want a trick ride? And your Travis, parents like, I love okay. you. And I and I know this is all for the joke, and it's a joke show <laughs> full of goofs and, and spoofs. There's no reality in which the first time you try a handstand, it's on a horse. That simply does not track. Cannot be it do- done. It cannot You're right. Be- You're right. You're right. A pony. You have to grow up together to establish that trust. Thank you, Justin. You no. are right. At two years you get, old, you, you, you had a new foal. You handstand on the foal. You grow it died. up together. You, got you died, one. and the pony died. The pony is. Listen. I think. If it, I think if you try to do a handstand on a pony and you die, I think the pony is also sort of summarily killed. <laughs> I think the pony's also destroyed. You killed my boy. <laughs> you killed <laughs> you weak back baby horse. <laughs> um, it's just not. It can't trick. be done. It's know. not okay. The two things that bother me the most of this one. He is objectively lied by saying it's easier on a horse. That is, that's a lie. Good on you for your lie detector going off. As far as proof, there is no reality in which if I did a handstand on a horse, I would not be wearing a shirt that says, take your fucking phone out and get ready to take a picture of this sick shit I'm about to do. Everybody would be ready to take a picture of me doing a handstand on a horse if I was about to do that. Ooh. Absolutely, there would okay. be pictures. Alternate theory. Alternate theory. I have now. This boyfriend is hiding a traumatic handstand horse event, similar to they're all traumatic. Growth. They're all tra- there's been there's been tops for non traumatic handstand horse. But th- this activities. is just like in the King Killer Chronicles when it's like Foth doesn't do magic anymore and doesn't play music, and we're all like, mm. what happened? Yeah. But why? In book three of your relationship, book one was longtime friends. Book two, boyfriend. Book three. In book three of your relationship with this person, you're going to find out what happened. And, oh, it's going to be so – It's gonna listen, be so good. I don't want to build this up. I don't want to give you false hope. It's going to be the sickest story you've ever heard. It doesn't matter how long it takes book three of your relationship to come out. <laughs> Correct. Take, could take, be. take your time. The horse handstand Patrick Rothfuss. Take your time and take polish time. it up. Get it ready. Get Don't it ready rushed. for us. And no pressure. Gonna, but <laughs> but <laughs> it's gonna be the fucking sickest shit ever. <laughs> Now, in the meantime, don't press your 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 partner too hard here because the this this third silence is his. You can't. You, he'll give you the story when he's ready for it. I. But it's gonna be. But it's, it's gonna, 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 be, gonna, be, gonna be, be incredible. Incredible. Do you guys want to Yahoo? Yes, please. Yes. Um. This one. Well, there's another one that's like a fine. Give me a name for a thing. But I feel like we. Well, we didn't really do that with the jeans because you fellas didn't really want to play along. You didn't play my game. Let's just do this one. Maybe I'll do two more. Uh, This one's from Irham Wisesa. Thank you, Irham. It's by Yahoo Answers user. They're anonymous. So I'm going to say also Joey. Joey is a very curious young man. Joey asks, what's a good name for a posh all-boys school? Pesto pants. Travis, God. (laughs) Salty slacks. I fucking can't believe you guys. (laughs) Okay, a good name. For a fancy boy boy school, like was if you posh, are the, wait, was it posh or fancy? Posh all boys school. If you're about to become the headmaster of, mm-hmm. I think that I think that that's that's I think we can all agree that's the dream. How mm. about Professor Xavier's school for okay kids? <laughs> <laughs> and you can go, and you can still get the patch. And yes, we do have um, a cool futuristic jet. But how about um, just the kids are just kind of okay. 
How about Lord Zachary Quillington's Institute for Refinement and Math? Also math. Also math. Well, maths. <laughs> maths. If we're going to get fancy on it. Fancy, How yeah. about Benedict Cumberbatch's Home for Sharp-Faced Boys? <laughs> Welcome. So glad you could join us. Is that him? I'm Bimbledick Cumberbatch. <laughs> you, doughy-faced young man, how did you get in? Get this dough boy out. Round features. <laughs> I shall leave you in the competent hands of my co-teacher, Eddie Redmayne. And then Eddie Rainman just kind of like morphs out of him. They just sort of like cellularly divide, and then they're um, and our sister Tilda Swinton. <laughs> yes, all of yeah, excellent. <laughs> Take yourself to Brendan Gleeson's school for <laughs> round boys. <laughs> That's where you belong. At Brendan's Institute of Ill Repute. Though fucking when that dodgeball game happened. That's exactly what I was about to say. This fucking go-kart race. Yes. And think of the hilarious, like, one of the sharp-faced boys gets hit by a ball. Ball deflates. Ball deflates. That's That's solid. Fucking great. I don't even, we're done. No need need to go further into this one. Yeah, that's that's great. We answered that. We helped that person. We helped someone. Well, I live um, in a college dorm, and an improv group recently started meeting every night. No, that's too much improv. Room. That's too much of it. It's too much. The pro- Take it from somebody who tried to do that for three weeks straight, making a TV show. It's too much. You can't you do can't that much. You can't be funny, all of it. The problem is their improv is really bad. I used to use the common room to cook dinner for myself but it's hard to focus on cooking the food that I need to live while they're literally rolling around the ground in front of me. (laughs) These are people that I need to face in class the next day. How can I cope? That's from Just Hungry in Baltimore. (laughs) Oh, fucking shit. That's a legit problem. At what point, if one is constantly doing improv, does that differ from just living your life every day? Whoa. Whoa. Wait, Whoa. what? What? Well, because like every day that sounded insightful, of... and then my other brain is like, <laughs> "Yeah, no, your wait. left lobe was like, no, 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 that was dumb. No, 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 that didn't make any sense." But what I'm saying is, if you walk into these people doing this every mm-hmm. day, and you leave, and they're still doing it, how do you know that they're like doing an event, and that this is just not the way they've chosen to live their lives? It doesn't oh. fucking matter. I'm trying to make a fucking. I'm trying to make my spaghetti over here. Can can you st- can you not? You just bumped into me doing a little skit about like how how you guys are are shoveling coal into a train engine. Oh, you fucking punched me while you were doing that. Why are you doing improv and you right know. fucking next to me while I'm trying to live my life? You know they're so desperate for inputs and prompts that they're definitely going to incorporate. Hey, Luigi, uh, oh pass me the sauce over here. I've got to put the pepper in it. Like, can you just? Not? Can you please? Please, oh, oh, instant ramen again. Uh Uh-oh, I don't know why I'm doing... Michael, you don't need to do that voice right now. You're right. You're right. The problem with cooking your your dinner is every night you have to come equipped with uh, a a readily available uh, place, career, and funny situation. Just call it out. Anybody, anybody. I'm the only one here! It's like the weirdest three Billy Goats, gr- like, answer me these riddles three. A place, a profession, and a food. This stinks. Maybe this is like their answer to improv anywhere. And this is like improv in one specific place forever. Improv, improv where you are. Here. Improv here now. Now here. <laughs> improv where Jim is. Making Impro- spaghetti. Improv at Jim. Just don't. The improv should be. I get uncomfortable with gym the improv. Prof. Gym prof. Fucking Thank shit. You. I get uncomfortable with the improv everywhere stuff because it's like improv should be a thing that I agree to. I am. I am going to go to an improv tonight. I. I said while well, living in Chicago, not so much here in Austin. Tonight I will go to an improv and I would go to it. It cannot come to me because I'm doing other things right now. <laughs> I don't have time for you improv. I. Oh, time to watch the season finale of Lost. All uh, right, you sure? Ding dong, cuckoo, cuckoo. Uh oh, somebody feed that duck. Stop.
Stop it! Stop! I gotta know what happens to Sawyer! <laughs> uh oh, my toilet's broke! I've got it! Don't worry about it! Rink, rink, rink! Stop! He's stabbing me! He's stabbing me! Ah, no, I'm not stabbing you! I'm. improv! Can you not do this? I'm in a movie with my with my kid. We're seeing Trolls 2. Can you fucking please not do this in the movies right now? Excuse me, sir. I'd like to see your ticket. Or else I'll have to kick you off the train. <laughs> Stop it's it. It's a train. It's not a train. I'm a Trolls 2 with my kid. Please. <laughs> uh, oh, you got to take this and turn it to your advantage. If you're like, oh, I can't wait to see Trolls 2, but I'm not able to go tonight. You know, then you go to the common room and you just shout out like Trolls 2. <laughs> and they're just like, that's good. <laughs> Can you guys do how you think Trolls 2 goes? <laughs> let me let me walk you through Trolls 1. Okay, so the Bergens have to eat trolls to be happy. Now get comfortable. There's a lot of twists and turns. <sighs> I don't see anybody taking notes. Uh Folks, that's going to do it for us on our improv show, <laughs> my brother and my brother and me. If you do improv, I hope I didn't upset you just then. Never did it. Don't quite understand the craft. I know it's not all people doing make, make-believe um, professions on each other, but... Yes. There's heralds involved. I know that. Yeah, yeah. There's, that's part of it. Uh, anyway, thank you to, for, to, for listening. Um so we've got a TV show now. Uh, it's on a service called CISO. You can get CISO at CISO.com. That's S-E-E-S-O.com. Uh, they got a free week, so you can go check it out and see what you think. There's a ton of great stuff on there, and I think you're just going to uh, go gaga over it besides our show. But in, in addition to our show – sorry, Trevor. Well, I was going to say, if you've already checked it out and you're like, oh, I watched the show – we just put up uh, a like a deleted scenes and a, like an eight minute blooper reel for the first episode, and there's gonna be more of that coming. So even though like all six episodes went up on the same day, there's gonna be more bonus content coming out periodically. Yeah, we're talking like like fifteen minutes of stuff went up today, so there's a lot on there. Um, they've got an app. Uh, you can get on the a Roku and Apple Store, and you can watch through Amazon Prime, and you can subscribe to CISO through that. But uh. Check it out. It's a great service, and the feedback to our show has just – everybody's been really, really kind about it, and we just really, really appreciate it. Um, if it came together at all, by the way, it has uh, only, like, partially to do with us and mainly to do with, like, the amazing people that we work with, like Greg and Jackie, JD, Seth, and Alex, and, every, and Anu, and everybody – uh, Steve and everybody who worked on the the show. So thank you to all of them, and thank you to y'all for watching it um, and letting us know what you think. Uh, I, I just want to say thank you to everybody for watching it and sharing it with friends. We've seen a lot of like listening parties, a lot of people like tweeting it, saying like I sat down with my wife and she's never listened to the show before and she loved the t-. like that kind of stuff makes me so happy to see like people not only supporting our show but also like supporting other people seeing it. It, it I I. It makes me feel very uh, uh, warm and fuzzy inside. So thank you very much. Um, I want to thank John Roderick and the Long Winters for our theme song. It's a departure off the album, putting the days to bed. Which I boy, I, I hope you, I hope you've purchased that album just in some way. Now they, they've been letting us use it for almost three hundred and fifty episodes, um, and it's a really good album. And I think you're really going to dig it. Uh, we also want to say go check out all the other amazing shows on MaximumFun.org. There's a ton on there. Um, a lot of them we're on, but uh, all of them are great. I'm a big fan of every show on the network. No exaggeration. Uh, coming up is the Max Fun Drive, which we'll tell you all about. But if you're new to the show since last March-ish, um, you, we've got a chance for you coming up to help support this show and the other shows on Max Fun that you love. So stay tuned for that. Um, the the important thing is there's going to be a lot of bonus content and a lot of new stuff for you to listen to. So it's a very exciting time. Um, anything? Oh, you can go to macroyshows.com. Also, if you want to check out all the stuff we're involved in, um, I just made it. Squarespace is not a sponsor this week, but I made it. I made my own website in Squarespace over the weekend. So if you it just looks so good, Griffin. Thank you, yeah, Travis. It's great. great website. Well, it looks Griffin, so good that it, it made me uh, feel like I need to update TravisMacroy.com. GriffinMacroy.com for a long time was just uh, referring to my Tumblr that I never fucking used, and I it was embarrassing. So and JustinMacroy.com is for a Canadian uh, reporter, I believe. Do you have .org? Um, 
Uh, yeah, he he got he got to the dot com. Um, we haven't talked about that recently, but um, I don't really appreciate him doing. I think dot org might be available. Uh, or dot pizza. I should get. I used to have a web. I did have a website. You had one for a bit, though. Yeah, I had one for a grip. I mean, I have my WordPress. Yeah, that's weird. But I don't know. That's weird. Anyway, um, don't update the WordPress either. So don't go hunting for it. Uh, um, except on Christmas, apparently I update it during Christmas time with my favorite playlist. I'm looking at it now. That's all I have. It's just Christmas playlists. Um, that is uh, that's all of our show. There's no more of the show. So okay, this is the end of it. Here's a final Yahoo from Jeffrey Corbello. Thank you, Jeffrey. It's Yahoo Answers user. Please just give me one fucking okay. Uh, Arthur Arthur USA's key. Oh man, I don't know. Thank you. Whatever your name is. Asks, I'm a fan of Kevin Costner. Can any of you beat that? <laughs> <laughs> my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Charles McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother. May you kiss your dad. Square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. My name is Patrick. My name is Parker. MaxFunCon has been a huge inspiration in my life. And now I have this network of friends that I've made that span literally across the entire globe. And they're some of my favorite people in the world. I truly cannot believe the amount of wonderful and lasting friendships that have come out of this if you feel like you might not fit in as long as you're a good person you'll fit in because everyone there is good and amazing and kind and wonderful and you should absolutely go it will be the best decision of your life make a ton of new friends like parker and patrick at max fun con tickets for max fun con and max fun con east are on sale now at maxfuncon.com